The Hidden Costs of Home Ownership. What's going on, everybody? It's Jeff Javarth and Jeff the Mortgage Pro here. Thanks so much for watching my videos. Today, we're going to talk about the hidden costs or somewhat hidden costs associated with homeownership. Um, this is budgeting beyond what just the mortgage payment is. And I want to make sure that we go over this stuff because a lot of people miss out on a lot of things that they have to pay for um, just because there's so many different things out there uh, that could get in the way. So I thought we'd go through kind of a list so that you have an idea of what, what, the, what costs are going to be associated when you buy a home or you own a home so that you have an idea of what it, what it is. Okay. If this is the first time you've ever done this before, this is going to be brand new to you. If you bought many homes before, this is all information that you probably already know, but let's go through a different list here. Before I get into it, if you really like these videos, please do me a huge favor. Go ahead and click on the like button down below. That helps me get my message out to more people. And if you really like my videos, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and that'll uh, alert you when these new videos come out. There's a little bell next to the subscribe, subscribe button. Go ahead and hit that and that'll give you the alert for it. But thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I, I love making these videos for everybody. Okay, so what are the hidden costs associated with buying a home or home ownership? So the first one, uh, I'm gonna talk about the account. The, these things are accounted for uh, as part of your mortgage calculation, how we determine your debt to end income ratio. And then what we'll do is we'll look at things that are not accounted for. So things, other costs associated with home ownership that are not factors in what the mortgage, how we calculate things. Okay. So the first costs that we have that are accounted for in our mortgage calculation are property taxes. And these are, can vary widely by location and many change over time, depending on your area, depending on what happens uh, with the, with the property itself and the county and the state <laughs> in which it's located in. So these are hard to predict on what's going to happen because I don't know what specific area you're in, but um, I do know that they could go up over time. So that's never a good thing, but just understand that that's something that's going to happen. When we do your mortgage calculation, we're just taking a picture of what it, the snapshot is uh, of what the current mortgage or what, what the current tax rate would be. And that's how we calculate it as part of your mortgage calculation. Okay. So we want to make sure that you're aware of this for local property taxes and so that you can budget accordingly for this. Okay, the second thing that's accounted for in the mortgage calculation is homeowners insurance. In addition to the mortgage payment, homeowners are required to have insurance to protect against uh, damage or loss. It's also called hazard insurance. If you've ever heard that term before or fire insurance, those are typically some of the other terms that you hear when you talk about homeowners insurance. Premiums can vary based on the home's location, the size, and several other different factors. So I know, for example, uh, here in California, uh, there's some mountainous regions that are susceptible to fires, and it's been really hard to insure those properties over the last couple of years because of the fires. And insurance companies don't run write, write policies in those areas. And if they do write policies in those areas, it's gonna be super expensive, like way beyond what you would normally pay for a house that's in the city or that it's not in a high higher fight, a high fire area. So homeowner's insurance is something to take a look out for or you can always shop around and try to find the best that it is for you, okay? The third thing that you want to look at is what's called private mortgage insurance or PMI. I'm sure that many of you have heard this term before, but that if your down payment is less than 20%, <clears throat> you may have to have PMI until you reach a certain level of equity in your home. And that means either the property goes way up in value or you pay it on your loan long enough to be able to have enough equity in the property based on the original purchase price and when you bought it. So it depends on how long you have to have PMI. And I mentioned this in several other videos before, but remember that PMI varies by several different factors. It varies by down payment. So zero to 5%, five to 10%, 10 to 15% and 15 to 20%. Those are when you have to have PMI, but it also varies by credit score tier. And there's lots of different credit score tiers. So really check to see what your PMI might be. It could be really high or it could be really low. And, and then if you're doing a different type of a loan, like an FHA loan, you have something what's called a mortgage insurance premium, which is almost exactly the same as PMI. It's just a different type of a loan and a different term for it. So private mortgage insurance, definitely another cost you got to watch out for when you're doing your mortgage. Here's another one. Um, I've 
I've seen people that uh, are buying a property, even though it's a single family in what's called a PUD or a public utility development, or if you're going to buy a condo or a townhome, those are also called PUDs in some instances. Uh, townhomes are called PUDs in some instances, but not condos. But homeowners association fees are another one that you have to look out for. <clears throat> sometimes they can be not very much, and sometimes they can be really, really expensive. And this can really help or like affect your qualification depending on how much you're going to pay for these different uh, HOA fees. Like I know in like Miami or Chicago or downtown areas, like HOA fees can be thousands of dollars, which is, uh, uh, you know, outrageous. But at the same time, like you have to pay that cost to live in those different areas, right? So make sure that you know what the homeowners association fee is, is going to be if you have to pay one, if you live in a PUD, public utility development, or if you're going to buy a condo as well. Okay. And then the last one, uh, this is a big one in a lot of different areas. It's flood insurance. So this kind of is self-explanatory, but depending on your property's location, flood insurance may be required, especially if it's in a designated flood zone area. So you you probably know if you're going to be in a flood zone, if you're buying a house on a river or a lake or you know an ocean, you probably know that that's going to be a part of a deal. But some instances, like you could be far away from it, but still be in the floodplain. So if, if it were to flood, you might have like soil underneath your property that can move. So definitely check um, when you're buying a property what the flood zone is and if you're going to have to pay flood insurance on that property or not and flood insurance can be not very expensive and it can be really expensive as well depending on the susceptibility of that flooding of that particular property so make sure that you look into that okay so those are five different things that we're accounting for in our mortgage insurance in our mortgage calculations and those are some costs of ownership those are not really hidden but they're definitely some things that you may want to take a look at and shop around for if you can in some instances, okay? So here's some things that are not accounted for when you own a home. Things like maintenance and repairs. <clears throat> You should definitely budget for ongoing maintenance in a property, regardless if it's a new home or an older home and any unexpected repairs that you have to pay. This includes like routine tasks like maybe lawn care, <laughs> maybe raking leaves, things of that nature, HVAC system servicing, and any other general upkeep of the property. So maintenance and repairs is definitely not accounted for in a mortgage calculation, but it's definitely an expense that you have to incur at some point. Utilities, okay, things like, uh, these are beyond the mortgage payment, but things like um, uh, water, electricity, gas, uh, garbage and trash removal. Uh, these costs can fluctuate based on usage and local utility rates, but definitely look into that to figure out how much is that gonna cost on a monthly, quarterly basis so that you have an idea of um, some extra expenses you're gonna have to pay beyond just the mortgage expenses that you already know you're gonna have to pay for, okay? Landscaping costs, again, um, if property has a yard, landscaping expenses such as lawn care, gardening, tree maintenance, all of those things need to be considered on how much you're going to actually have to pay for. So kind of get an idea for what your area is. Maybe you're in the desert of Arizona and you don't have any tree maintenance, <laughs> but maybe you're in uh, the north woods of Minnesota and you got to, you know, clean up all the pine needles every day. <laughs> I don't know. You know, so it just definitely depends on where you're buying at, but make sure that you account for landscaping costs. Here's another one, appliance replacement. So over time, appliances like refrigerators, um, ovens, HVAC systems, are, they're definitely gonna be needed replaced at some point, or at least maintained and repaired so that they actually perform well. Planning for these expenses can prevent financial strain when your upgrades become necessary. So just make sure you take that into account that you should make sure you have some money set aside over time. So when you need to replace those things, you actually have, you can. Um, home warranty is another cost. Some owners choose to purchase a home warranty or maybe your real estate agent will purchase it for you. I think this is a really good idea. This covers like repair or replacement of major home systems and appliances over a certain amount of time after you buy the home. Uh, it's an additional cost up front, but I would say that it's probably well worth it in most instances. So ask your agent about the home warranty that you can buy and figure out how you can get the best one available, okay? Special assessments. These are things in some cases that uh, homeowners may be subject to special assessments assessments by that HOA uh, or local government or for community improvements or infrastructure projects. So 
you know, depending on where you're living, the government can come in and say, hey, we're going to need to do this and we're going to need to charge you for this. So be aware that that could happen going forward um, and hopefully have enough money saved up that you can be able to, you know, account for that if you needed to. Pest control, you know, things like termites or, um, you know, rodents or things like that that you might need to maintain. Uh, if you don't want to do it yourself, you're going to have to pay for it. That's something that you may need to account for in terms of your uh, home ownership costs. And then lastly, home security. Some areas may not need this, but in some areas you definitely need this, right? Installing a security system or monitoring services may be an additional expense for you as a homeowner, especially if you're concerned about the safety of your property. So always account for that depending on where you're living and whatnot. Okay. I hope this was really helpful. I hope that you get some ideas here about other costs that are going to be associated with homeownership for you. If you want to discuss this at all, please go ahead and hit the uh, like button down below and go ahead and click on my calendar link. Let's schedule a call. I'd love to talk to you about some of these different things. If you have any other ideas, go ahead and drop it in the comments below. Um, I definitely try to cover as many as I can, but I'm, I'm sure I didn't cover everything. And I'd love to have you guys help me out and interact with me a little bit, but thanks so much for watching. I will see you on the next show. Have a good one. Talk to you soon.